college basketball starts to wrap up, we start counting down the days until the NBA draft in June. And this year, a number of draft prospects in the Final Four, including a couple of guys looking to go back-to-back -back as champions for UConn, Bo Stephon Castle and Donovan Klingon. Very well first-round picks. Are they lottery picks? Of course, Zach Eady, last year's player of the year, the front-runner to win the award again. And DJ Burns, is he played his way into the draft. Let's welcome an expert, Kyle Boone, here. Let's start with Stefan Castle. I was looking at yours and Gary Parrish's mock drafts, and the last time you guys did one that was posted online was March 15th. So some things might have switched till then because that was a couple weeks ago. Let's start with Stefan Castle. You guys initially had him as the guys in the Final Four, the first girl name getting called. Is he still a for sure lottery pick for you now? He is for sure still a lottery pick for me. He's six foot six. Um, he's very versatile defensively. Um, UConn is such a better team whenever he is on the floor. His defense is fantastic, can switch, guard multiple positions. Offensively, I think there's some questions here. Uh, shooting just 26% from three-point range. Not really a confident shooter at this point, but this 2024 class is particularly weak at the top. And someone who is a prospect like Stefan Castle, because of his size, because of the flashes that he's shown on offense, I think he's going to be a top 10 pick in this class. What about his teammate Donovan Klingon? Because it seems like this is a player who's really elevated himself during the tournament. 7-2, 22 points, 10 boards, 5 blocks during the Elite Eight. He had 8 blocks during the round of 32. How much has his stock risen, in your opinion, over the past month or so? Oh, significantly. Yeah, he's, he's a guy who's gone from like a, a surefire lottery pick to potentially playing his way into the number one pick spot. He's been that good. And this is a loaded center class in the 2024 NBA class. Um, he could easily contend and go number one overall. This season, UConn is 15 points per 100 possessions better when he is on the floor versus when he is off the floor. And last game, as you mentioned, five blocks against Illinois. Illinois went 0 for 19 on field goal attempts contested by Donovan Klingon. So he's an elite defensive prospect, someone who I think you can plug and play in the NBA right away. You said he potentially has the chance to go number one overall. We got to talk about Zach Eady. We had Matt Norlander on earlier. And, and look, he's going to his grave with this, that Zach Eady has hands down been the best player in college basketball last year, this year as well, despite some people saying, hey, is he just a big guy here? Where does he fall, though, for you when it comes to the draft? Yeah, I, I have him late lottery, uh, excuse me, late first round right now. Some people have him late lottery. That's actually a thing that's out there right now. Uh, he's seven foot four. He's 300 pounds. Uh, he has been the most dominant player in college basketball the last two seasons. He leads college basketball in points per game, win shares, player efficiency rating, plus minus, and a very polarizing evaluation in that he doesn't shoot threes. He's a little bit slow in terms of his foot speed, uh, but you look at Purdue and what they've been able to build around Zach Eady, uh, that ecosystem has been fantastic. It has carried them to the Final Four this year. And, you know, I, I think he's going to end up going somewhere in the late first round, which is where I have him around number 30. Uh, if he ends up playing his way a little bit higher into the 20s, wouldn't be totally surprising. He's had a great NCAA tournament and he surprised some people during the NBA draft combine when I was in Chicago last year. In terms of his shooting, his polish, uh, people really believe that he has shooting touch that will eventually translate to becoming a, a stretch big man at the next level. If he can do that, uh, then I think there's some serious interest in potentially in the back end of the lottery in this year's class. The back end of the lottery, but you mentioned also the end of the first round. I mean, for, for people watching this and you hear the name Zach Eady and they know that he's won all these awards, and then he's a little bit lower than some of the other guys we're starting to see in the final four. Why is that? Is it because of, I mean, you said it was polarizing a little little bit what doesn't translate necessarily over to the NBA granted first round still amazing yeah no it, I mean if you put Zach Eady into the year you know 2004 Zach Eady's possibly the first overall pick in the draft the NBA has changed so much over the last few years and really especially over the last few decades where big men who are more traditional uh, they, they play kind of with their back to the basket as you see here they, you don't see them thrive as much in the NBA as, as you may be used to in years past. Um, his, his defense is very impactful. His length, obviously, at seven foot four. We've seen what Victor Wimbanyama has done at the NBA level. 
at seven foot five. Uh, just the way that the size changes the geometry on the floor. Zach Eady does that for Purdue. Can he do it at the NBA level? Now, that's a, a separate question. Again, very polarizing evaluation for some NBA teams. Uh, but I think just because of the potential upside that he brings and the development that he's shown over the last few years, uh, we could see him go somewhere in like the late lottery, late first round, um, somewhere in that range for Zach Eady. Kyle, somebody that has won the hearts of so many people heading into the Final Four, DJ Burns with NC State. And this is not a name that we were talking about when it came to the NBA draft, but here he is taking his team to the Final Four. And as I mentioned, people have just fallen in love with this guy. And yes, there's chatter. What about the NFL draft? But what about the NBA draft? I mean, is there a chance we could see this guy get drafted? I think it's unlikely, but I wouldn't totally rule it out. You know, it's like, like I wouldn't rule NC State out. I, I thought NC State would lose in the first round of the NCAA tournament. Here they are in the Final Four, in part because DJ Burns has been fantastic. He's 23 years old. He's a little bit older in terms of the NBA draft. This is his sixth year in college. Uh, he's a little bit smaller uh, for a center at six foot nine. Uh, doesn't have great shooting touch beyond the paint area, but as we've seen during the NCAA tournament, he's got great shooting touch around the paint. He's got great passing ability. And even Nikola Jokic earlier this week said that obviously his players love to play with him. He's an affectious personality. Um, he loves to pass the ball. He loves to, to get teammates involved. So, you know, I wouldn't rule him out of being a potential NBA prospect at some point. Uh, right now, he's not on my radar as a potential first round pick, but you know, second round, uh, if the team decides they want to take a chance on him, wouldn't be totally surprising. And regardless, we're going to have a ton of fun watching him come Saturday. Hey, really quickly, with the McDonald's All-American Game tonight, headlined by Cooper Flagg, according to 24-7 Sports, he is the number one recruit across the board. Uh, he is committed to Duke, though, so congratulations to y'all. What do we need to know about this kid? Yeah, he's uh, he would be the number one pick in this 2024 class. I, I think there's no question about it. He's the best prospect right now in high school basketball. Plays for Montverde. Uh, it's the number one team in high school basketball. Flag the number one prospect in his class. Uh, he's committed to a Duke team that is currently number one in the team rankings, in, according to the recruiting rankings. And he's just been awesome. He's a great defensive prospect to see here. He, his shot blocking anticipation is so fantastic at, at his size, his ability to put the ball on the floor and score and really just be a, a dominant two-way player is is what people are so excited about for Flag. And he's going to be a great college prospect and a really impactful player, I think, from day one when he steps on the floor at Duke next season. Kyle, we appreciate it. We'll look forward to watching him tonight. Enjoy the rest of the week. Try to get some sleep before we hit the weekend. By the way, CBS Sports, we just debuted this podcast last month, Beyond the Arc, Bill Ryder, Ashley Nicole Moss, John Gonzalez. Everything you need to know about the NBA, make sure to scan the QR code if you want to watch and